Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. War has always been fought by human beings, but thanks to major advances in robotics, this may change sooner rather than later. In 2012, Boston Dynamics revealed its Cheetah robot, a four-legged robotic system capable of running at speeds of over 28 miles per hour. Another Boston Dynamics invention, the LS3, is a robotic pack animal that the military says may be useful in carrying supplies, fuel, and arms for troops on the move. With the ability to carry up to 400 pounds, built-in GPS, and the ability to follow voice commands, the LS3 could dramatically reduce the loads soldiers need to carry in the field. Though these are merely prototypes, the US military already uses robots for various non-combat jobs, including painting aircraft, which reduces human exposure to harmful chemicals. Robotics are also revolutionizing search and recovery missions, which are often considered some of the most dangerous challenges military personnel can face. LIDAR, which stands for Light Detection and Ranging, is being integrated by robotic systems at higher and higher rates. These unique systems utilize map surfaces by emitting laser pulses and measuring the reflected light, creating a detailed 3D topographic image that can be viewed via satellite. When incorporated into drones or ground robots, the LiDAR systems could theoretically be used to locate and evaluate vehicle wreckage in dense forests or mountainous areas while speeding up the search by properly informing teams. Many people have been quick to compare LiDAR to sonar, which uses sound waves to create maps and images. However, many state-of-the-art underwater robots use both sonar and optical sensors to locate objects, including crash debris at sea. This has proved remarkably beneficial for Project Recover, which aims to locate aircraft crash sites and underwater wrecks where U.S. servicemen are believed to have been lost at sea. Equipped with advanced manipulators, ROVs can also retrieve critical evidence from the seabed, significantly speeding up recovery while also allowing for deeper dives than human divers would be capable of. Though the four-legged pack robots designed by General Dynamics might still be a few years away from the front lines, many innovative robots are already performing a wide range of jobs. In many cases, these non-combat robots are used for tasks that would otherwise pose a serious risk to humans, such as bomb disposal or live fire training. Many of the latter are very simple and are only intended to simulate human movement front, back, or side to side. While hardly complex, they provide soldiers with dynamic mobile targets that can help improve marksmanship and add a touch of realism to simulated combat scenarios. One of the robots that is currently being tested for frontline battle support is the MARS, which is short for Modular Advanced Armed Robotic System. Mm 
Mars is an extremely compact and customizable platform. Weighing around 370 pounds, it can move at speeds of around seven miles per hour, using tracks to navigate a wide range of obstacles. Current tests focus on perimeter support and surveillance, but some Mars units have been equipped with M240B machine guns, M203 grenade launchers, and even tear gas canisters. With a range of more than 1,000 meters, these devices could prove extremely useful in a range of battlefield scenarios. While impressive to look at, four-legged robot designs have yet to prove themselves more practical than tracked vehicles, which tend to offer superior stability. One example is the PackBot, a rugged, highly agile robot used extensively in explosive ordnance disposal operations and by SWAT teams. The company behind PackBot, Endeavor Robotics, specifically designed it to be quick to deploy, allowing it to be mission ready in just a few minutes. It is also highly customizable, allowing it to be used for bomb disposal, hazardous material detection, and reconnaissance, depending on the loadout. With a manipulator arm and advanced sensors, it can safely approach, inspect, and even interact with objects in its environment, dramatically reducing risks to humans. Like the Mars, Endeavor Robotics is currently working on fully armed versions of the PackBot platform, which they say could support or even replace soldiers one day. Explosive ordnance disposal is not only used on land. Ships often have to deal with explosive ordnance in the form of derelict mines, torpedoes, and depth charges. Estimates say there are potentially thousands of unexploded ordnance dotting the world's oceans and rivers, which means they pose a risk to both civilian and military vessels. For this reason, the U.S. Navy has come to rely on platforms like the MK2 Talon IED robot. These tracked robots feature extremely precise manipulator arms, capable of performing even the most minute tasks. When it comes to naval vessels, no situation is more critical than a fire breaking out aboard a ship. Because of the limited amount of space and ship designs that are almost maze-like, smoke and flames can spread rapidly aboard ships. Since naval vessels often carry ammunition, fuel, and other flammable materials, a minor fire can quickly turn into an explosive and deadly situation if it is not properly contained. Enter the Saffir, or Shipboard Autonomous Firefighting Robot. Standing six feet tall, the Saffir features human-like movement allowing it to navigate the tight spaces and sharp corners on naval vessels.
Most importantly, the robot can withstand high temperatures while detecting fires and assisting human firefighters by using thermal imaging and gas sensors to find the fire sources. It also operates hoses and firefighting tools, making it a versatile asset during onboard emergencies. The U.S. Navy's partners hope that introducing robots like SAFR will help reduce the pressure on shipboard personnel to maintain an extremely high level of fire safety. the past few decades, detailed firefighting drills have been a regular part of life on Navy vessels. Because every member of a ship's crew must be available to fight a potential fire if one breaks out, these drills typically consist of all hands-on-deck situations, where real-life fire scenarios are simulated to ensure quick response, communication, and coordination. Ship crew members are trained to control fires within minutes, using both water-based suppression systems and chemical extinguishers. They are well aware of the consequences involved should a fire be allowed to escalate. In fact, in 2020, a fire cost the U.S. Navy a WASP-class amphibious assault ship worth more than $1 billion. Reports indicate that the fire broke out on the morning of July 12, 2020 while the amphibious assault ship was docked for maintenance at Naval Base San Diego. The blaze reportedly began in a lower storage area known as the Deep V, a compartment filled with maintenance materials, cardboard, and other flammable items. Due to the complex nature of how fires behave aboard naval vessels, the blaze ended up burning for four days, leading to billions of dollars in damage to the vessel. Shipboard firefighting teams were the first to respond, attempting to control the fire using handheld extinguishers and fire hoses. However, the intensity of the flames and the thick smoke quickly overwhelmed them. To make matters worse, the ship's fire suppression systems were turned off due to ongoing maintenance. In the end, both military and civilian firefighting teams had to be called in, with boats, helicopters, and land-based trucks all working to put out the blaze. While human firefighters and damage control teams worked tirelessly, the incident underscored the potential benefits of having autonomous firefighting robots like SAFR that could operate continuously in hazardous conditions without risking human lives. Among other things, the Bonham Richard Fire demonstrated the critical need for robotic assistance to improve firefighting efficiency and safety. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.